Oh. I'm now with a uh, professional wrestler Terry Guerin, alias uh, Rhino. Hi Terry, how are you? Good, good. Uh, at first, uh, Terry, I want uh, to know if uh, Terry Guerin did not become a professional wrestler, uh, what kind of job would you choose as career? Uh, it all depends. Um, I really enjoy politics, you know, American politics. I enjoy, uh, um, I enjoy watching. Uh, like different countries and the way how they uh, operate and their policies and politics too and you know um, I really enjoy that and obviously it's never too late for anything you know so when did you discover your passion for wrestling uh, obviously as a little kid um, I really enjoyed wrestling um, I was always a passionate person you know, even as a child I enjoyed um, certain things um, you know like Uh, just like watching football, playing football, um, and anything I did, I did with passion. So um, I think that really um, when you're entering into any line of work, if you have a lot of passion that drives you, you know, uh, that that's very good, especially in a business like professional wrestling. Who was your idol? Uh, who was my idol? Probably uh, Hulk Hogan. When did you begin in wrestling? Uh, my first match was March 10th, 1995. I started training uh, September 24th, 1994. Why, uh, why the name of Rhino? Um, it fit. It worked. And uh, obviously it's a lot more marketable than uh, Terry Garen or Terrence Garen. You have won many titles in wrestling. Which one is your favorite and why? I think every uh, title holds a special meaning to a person. Even though wrestling, um, a lot of people say it's sports entertainment. Um, you know, you lose yourself. You know, you try to get the fans to lose themselves into the product, into your match. Um, you know, I think a title just... Um, to me it represents the hard work you know and uh, the long hours in a car um, you know the sacrifices you make you know um, so it represents you know like the people you work for whether it's an independent promotion um, whether it's TNA WWE Ring of Honor they, uh, they see that commitment you've made and that passion you have and I think you can, you know, draw some money and do some stuff and so they, you know, give you that opportunity, you know, with the title. What do you love uh, more in your job? What do I love the most about my job? I, I really enjoy getting on the road, uh, driving. If, uh, if you know me, I enjoy driving. Um, the only other person that I've seen can drive is as much as I can um, is Jimmy Jacobs. I thought I met my match, but he says he says uh, I've got him beat when it comes to uh, long distance driving, but uh, if I got him beat, it's not by much. But I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still on the fence about that one. I, hey, I wouldn't mind bowing out second place to him because I've seen him drive. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, just in, in helping the younger you know, generation and, and, and passing on things I've learned from, you know, guys like Ric Flair or listening to Triple H in meetings and just even talking to him and, you know, about just average stuff and not knowing, you know, I was picking his brain. Maybe he didn't know, maybe he did. Um, I did that with Flair because uh, the first, uh, I want to say, after I started changing the green room, him, Nash, Angle, Sting, we all changed in there. And uh, one day I just thought to myself, I'm going to change in the green room. And then, because uh, they had TV in there, <laughs> I could watch the news. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pick Flair's brain. So he'd show up. He was always in there, you know, come in, sit down. Like if he had to sign a bunch of pictures and, um, He'd sign them off or he'd do whatever and just start talking about, 
you know, what drew money and how certain angles worked and how they worked and what made them and how it was made and what they did to draw the money and stuff. And, you know, after six months of just picking his brain, hey, you know what I'm doing? He's like, yeah, you're picking my brain. I'm like, okay, you cool with that, obviously. He's like, yeah, good for you. So, I mean, and you have to pass certain things you learn on, you know. I mean, I can't take, you know, a guy like Ric Flair's uh, words and pass them on. Um, but certain things that I've learned, I can pass on, you know, so. I learned that uh, one of your best friends is uh, Pierre Carl Ouellette. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear you about the PCO. PCO, he's a great guy. Love him. Hell of a talent. Uh, I, I learned so much from him with TAG. Uh, when we were doing the Thug Life, Edge, Christian, um, Joey Legend, and... Um, We had uh, Bill Scullion involved when he'd get booked on the thing, but anyways, but it was usually us, us four, and uh, you know they started showing me how to tag. It was usually uh, Edge and Christian, or I'm sorry, Edge and Joey Legend tagging, and Christian and I we were more singles, and uh, um. You know, I, I still listened to their matches and tried to learn some psychology on tag. And then I went overseas in 97 um, for uh, Otto Vance's group and uh, Catch Wrestling Association. And um, I tagged, they put uh, uh, PCO and I together. And, um, like just the education I got, you know, on, you know, he was once... WWF tag team champion and uh, I mean just like the psychology and the things I mean I went from not really knowing the psychology of tag or just the basics to coming out of after three months like I could go out there and work a tag match with someone and make it make sense and blow the roof off the place so All the people know how you can perform in hardcore match like tonight are extreme rules. But why do you love uh, more this kind of match? Um, I don't. I, I have a knack for it. Um, I uh, I enjoy it, and I was very fortunate to learn um, how to wrestle proper hardcore um, from guys like Sabu, Raven. Um, Tommy Dreamer and then I was able to pass that on when I went to WWE and I worked with some guys and you know uh, we really you know were able to create a style where it wasn't just you know um, swinging chairs and stuff like that we'd mix all that stuff in with good wrestling and you know and that's that's what people really enjoy you know You have wrestled for all the biggest company in the business, and uh, you have wrestled in Indies company. Do you have the same fun? Oh yeah, yeah. I, you know what? Whether I'm wrestling for an independent group or whether I'm wrestling for WWE, I go out there with the same amount of passion, and I go out there with the same amount of drive. And I enjoy the younger uh, crop of talent, and I see how hungry they are. And uh, you know, and a lot of them will ask me to watch a match, and I'll always tell them what they did right opposed to just going out there and say, oh, you, you, you shit the bet on this, you shit the bet on that. Um, I always tell them what I liked, what I thought was really good, and the fan, usually the fans will react to it. And then um, I explain certain things they can change to make it better. Um, and the things that they, they should think about changing, and I encourage them to watch it so they see exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, because if you just tell a person to do something, you know, and they don't know why, then they might not learn. But if you have them watch it, if you have them understand, if you have them sit there and dissect it themselves, and they, they really study it and watch it and think about how it can be done better, um, they'll probably learn a lot quicker, and they'll probably learn, you know, so. What's your mind about the Quebec crowd? Oh, I love Quebec crowd. They're, uh, they'll let you know what they think of you, <laughs> whether they like you or they don't. 
So tonight, uh, when I turned on uh, Judas, the guy, I was walking back, the guy threw my shirt at me. You're not getting any refunds. He didn't want money back. He didn't want it. And he wanted me to, I threw it back at him. I could keep it. And uh, he didn't speak English, but uh, he threw it back at me. He did not want it. <laughs> like, so I threw it back at him. And he threw it back at me. I'm like, fine, I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, they don't care. They'd rather throw the $20 away. <laughs> How do you see which, you? Uh, which, which I like that. You know, when the fans, um, they can get out there and they lose herself in the moment and they enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy that because you're, you're entertaining them. How do you see uh, your futures in uh, wrestling? Um, I feel great. I just turned 39. Um, that was a great moment for you to say happy belated birthday. It's okay. Um, just, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, with, obviously with hard work and uh, passion that I have, I've got a good work ethic and, you know, so, I mean, you never know what the future holds, but if you have passion, if you have great um, work ethics, if you have common sense and you have drive, you're going to succeed in anything you do, so... The next question is very important for me. I want to know the secret of your training to be strong like you. Um, I was blessed. <laughs> and, uh, just, you know, I, I like to get in the gym and throw around weight. You know, just the basic um, form, technique, just throw around the weight. I really enjoy throwing it around, but I, I train smart, you know. So. If something's bothering me, I'll work around it and, you know, and nurse it. But I'll also, you know, the things that aren't bothering me. So stretching's the key. DDP yoga. And uh, to close, if you have a thing to say to a young boy who wants to be a wrestler, what is the best advice you can give him, to him? Um, go to a good uh, training facility and uh, make sure you learn the proper way. Um, And if it's something that you really want, you know, you'll uh, you'll achieve your goals. But it's, you know, with all those things I said earlier, you know, you have to have. So, Rhino, thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, thank you to all the uh, fans here in Quebec.